Well, here goes. Just stand on the platform. I'll take it from there. In for a dime, in for a dollar. So there's no turning back now. Feeling kind of, I don't know, a little anxiety about this. Stepping off into the unknown. This is how games are supposed to be. This is this is the feeling you're supposed to get. This is awesome. So stand still. We gotta lock in all those molecules of yours. Hopefully we won't miss any. There's only, you know, 60 trillion of them. All right, feeding our baby some juice. Let's see what she's got. Take this hollow tape. You need it to contact a patriot. Oh man, uh, don't worry. That, that's all part of the plan. Tom, <laughs> do whatever you can to gain their trust. Lie. Tell them what they want to hear. Make up a cover story and sell it. Come on, I think I got it. Establishing lock on the institute signal. Just get all the information you can about synths, about the institute's plans. Find their weaknesses. If we can disable or destroy the Institute, we may have to do it. You jack that holotape into any terminal and Patriot will make contact. He has to. Got the aura! We got it! Find a way to save them. Nobody else can. Now! Oh wow, this reminds me of being born in Fallout 3. The white screen. And here we are. I, I guess we made it. Hopefully all our parts are still intact. We're not like missing a limb or a piece of a brain or a heart valve or something. Tom really did his thing, man. Managed to make that thing work. Awesome. Alright, I unlocked agility for a specific reason. I want to start working on this ninja part down here. Should have had this unlocked a long time ago. Better late than never, though. All right, well, let's uh, see what there is to see. Oh, that, that music tone. Man, this reminds me a little bit of Mass Effect. Just a little bit. Once again, another Bioware reference. I guess it would be kind of foolish of me to assume that they didn't know I was coming and they don't know I'm here. They've been watching everything, every step of the way. I mean, even the radio waves of music going across the wasteland is how they get back and forth with their coursers and their synths and stuff and whatever. So it's kind of dumb to think that they don't know I'm... Well, everything I've been doing up to this point, really. Hello? Hello? I wondered if you might make it here. You're quite resourceful. I'm known as Father. The Institute is under my guidance. I know why you're here. I'd like to discuss things with you face to face. Please, step into the elevator. Okay. The Institute is under this person or thing's guidance. This reminds me a little bit of President Eaton at Raven Rock, just a little bit. I guess now's as good a time as any. Upload that thing that Tom said to plug into the computer. X324, X6. wonder if the XXXX is from the courser that we killed. I guess you can't read the, the coarser chip. Oh well. No. Oh well. Whatever. Transmitting. Damn. Tom. Tom really does know his business. Handshake complete with his uh, custom made program and stuff. Pretty cool. Alright, plug this into any institute terminal and copy the message. Alright, I will do that. Read Patriot's reply. 
Oh, shit. That was fast. Advanced systems maintenance room. Okay, we got to remember that. Advanced systems maintenance room. I wonder if this will be Sean, this patriot person. Damage camera. Must be nice living down here, separate from the world that these assholes created, not having to suffer any of the consequences of their actions while everyone else suffers. He gets all mutated and irradiated and shot up by mutants and raiders and rad scorpions and just etc. etc. Not a bad looking lab coat there, huh? I think I'll keep one as a souvenir. Said step in the elevator. I guess he's talking about this. I guess so. I can only imagine what you've heard, what you think of us. No, it's what I've seen, not what I've I'd heard. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves to humanity's survival. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's underground. too much at okay. stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. All thanks to you, though. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific, very personal reason. You are here for your son. And you know that, yet we still have the games. This smoke and mirrors, cat and mouse bullshit. Okay, I'm going to keep some things in mind. I'm supposed to have um, <clears throat> misinterpreted things. No, I, I know what the coursers are, I know why they do what they do, who they're doing it for, how they do it. I know what Kellogg was. I know who he belonged to. I got to see into his mind. Memories, those weren't lies. Those were his actual memories that I got to live and experience. And I saw what the Institute was when they signed them on. And that was under this person's directorship, I guess? Can't pick this. This person or this thing, maybe this computer, the fa whatever this father Sean? is. Huh? Oh, wow. Yes, uh -oh. I'm Sean. Sean. I've been looking for you for so long. Who are you? Sean, it's, it's me. I'm your mom. Father, what's going on? What's happening? Sean. Are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? What's going on? Father? Father! Sean, honey? What do you want me to do? I don't know you. Go away! Father! Father, help me! There's someone here! Help me! Please, Sean. I'm your mother. Just talk to me. Just open the door. Father? Father, help me! She's trying to take me! Father? Father, help me! Sean. 
S923, recall code Cirrus. Fascinating, hmm. but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am father. Welcome to the Institute. Yeah, how about my son? Like now. Give me Sean. The real Sean. Right now. I know. I know. You've gone to such lengths to find him. I want answers, asshole. Now. Under the circumstances, I will forgive your vulgarity, but I need you to realize that this situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well, your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded. It's man enough game. Finally meet you. After all this time, it's me. I am Sean. Uh -oh. I am your son. I didn't see that coming. How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the sun you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not ten, but sixty years? That is the reality, and here I am. Raised by the Institute, and now its leader. But why? Why take a child? Why take you? Ah, now that's the question, isn't it? Why me? At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being. Walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. Human synths? Really? Human-like synths. A great distinction. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. And you've... You've been down here the whole time? I have. Yes. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Hmm. Kellogg. He worked for you? Kellogg. Good question. He was an institute asset long before I arrived here. 
It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? Would you have preferred that I turned him loose on the Commonwealth? At least keeping him on a short leash kept the collateral damage to a minimum. Or kill him. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute, but his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you, us, to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to ease your mind? Well, it could have got me killed, too. Hmm. Dear father, he never got to see you grow up. Yes. What happened to him was... Kellogg? I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems what happened to him was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret. And asking what if more often. But what matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. What else can I say to ease your mind? So you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The Institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future. No matter what those above ground might think of us. But, Director? Why you? I was the most qualified for the position. Obviously. I've lived my life within these walls, dedicated to science like every other member of the Institute. My hard work has paid off. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss, but the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. Away from and the real now, world. After all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? You want me to stay here in... in the Institute? Yes. That is what I propose. Is it so hard to imagine? The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. How can you say that? How can you be so dismissive of all those people? Everything they've done. Because it is the simple truth. And I believe you know it too. You assume too much. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interest at heart. <laughs> Will you take that chance? To infiltrate you easier? Sure. Are you sure you want this? Yes, I am. It would benefit us both to work together. Just don't know. Just give it time. Give the Institute a chance. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. 
You'll want to introduce yourself to the division heads. Dr. Fillmore in facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB. Dr. Holdren in bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in advanced systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep some things in mind here. See, a smooth, sincere tone isn't, <laughs> isn't necessarily the truth, just because it sounds soothing, okay? I watched that courser in action, and now I know who sent that courser and whose guidelines he's working under. Kellogg, you may excuse him and write him off as, oh, he was with the Institute before you got here, and it was just a unnecessary evil type of thing. And maybe some truth to that to further your ends. But remember, okay, it's this science it's that got mankind and y'all are programmed to be polite, huh? All right, it's this science that got mankind in the situation that it's in now. They're paying the consequences just because they've been living here, all cushy, away from the real world that they created, not having to suffer any of those consequences, doesn't make them any less responsible. And they're continuing on with that same line of thinking, thinking that somehow they're superior and can still improve on the human race. The human race is not the mistake. These people are the mistake in what they did to the human race. In fact, it's not a mistake, it's a crime. It's a felony, okay? Um, I think the hardest truth to face here is no parent wants to wake up and discover that their child is a monster. Whether, and, and, and it's even harder, it makes it more of a quote unquote gray area, especially to those who are parents, I'm sure, if that child has an excuse. He was raised by the Institute. He never knew the world up above. He doesn't even really know what he's separated from except having seen and heard by rumor and reports and scouting missions and whatever, you know, whatever his, his sense and his coursers tell him and all that. I mean, I get it, but it doesn't make it any less abominable what he's doing if he's a tool of the of the brain trust that is the institute then that is what it is that's a really harsh reality to face that not liking it doesn't make it less true and so i think that is what my character has to come to terms with sooner hopefully rather than later is that the child is a monster or the product of a monster an extension of that monster but no less a monster nonetheless even if he may be in his brainwashed mind um, thinking that he's doing the right thing. If you get down to the root of the problem, the Institute is the problem. It's not a solution. It's when the problem fronts itself as being a solution, kind of like liberal politics. Promote more of the problem as a solution and wonder why things keep getting worse. Just a perfect example. Um, shots fired? Well, I don't know. I'm just making a simple observation. I don't really care about politics one way or another, but just, you know... And that's a harsh truth. It's a harsh reality. It's, but it's easy. It's easy to remain ignorant of history. It's, it's easy to remain ignorant of the cause and not take responsibility. Let someone else pay for it. And that's what the people up above are doing. Is they're paying, but, they're, but they're surviving. And with no help from the Institute. In fact, for all intents and purposes, the Institute is doing more harm than good. Their synths get loose because they want to go live somewhere because they made them too realistic in their efforts to play God and so they have to go chase them down and kill a bunch of people in the process not doing anything to clean up the world above uh, my guess is that they are going to find a way to completely eradicate everything above and replace it with some kind of improved heavy quotes on that improved person which would be the synth now the synths that have escaped and do possess the faculties of a human being I'm not knocking them but the replacing of people with sense or thinking that it's somehow an improvement on humanity how is if mankind needs to be improved then how is man capable of creating man to improve upon itself that's a self-feeding insanity it makes no sense it's it, there is no logic it, it defies everything that science is about which is basic logic in fact um it's a paradox boy i haven't done this in about 200 years excuse me clean toilet too all right I had to take advantage of that sorry i was just, just playing around but anyway, so um, I'm going to have to keep in mind, we'll, we'll go with what, we, what we've seen already and not what we hear here, because we're going to have a huge smoke screen blown in our face and a lot of, well, just a lot of smoke and mirrors here. I can already see it. This is really cool the way they made this. Father is more than just our leader. He 
is our creator. Almost done. Okay, I know he's not Titan programming him to think and talk like that, right? That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned, the phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Okay. Um, we'll go meet with the department heads. What's this? Alright, well, I'll, I'll break into a room, sure. Excuse to unlock a mask terminal. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna keep in mind what we've what we've seen and actually heard, and not what we hear and see here. Um, like Tom said, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep this in mind. Trust nothing, and no, not even your own son. And like I say, whether it's his fault or not isn't really even the point. Now, you have a lot more lives than his at stake. A truly unselfish person would be willing to even sacrifice the whole idea of their child. Although this really isn't my child except by flesh and blood, but there is no um, real connection there. He's been raised by the... He's the Institute's child, as far as that goes. Uh, I guess my character would be more of a surrogate mother, I guess, as far as that goes. And uh, that's, that's, that's another thing. It's an ugly truth, but it's, it's the truth nonetheless. Wow, this is, uh, is going to be pretty, pretty hard to face either way. Yeah, they've been they've been away from the real world for too long. Look at all this. Must be nice. No lack of anything down here. And I guess they scavenge the world up above so that they can keep replenishing stuff like this. They have the means to manufacture it down here, but they get the materials from people up above, so if you're leeching off the world above, then you must need the world above for something. Hmm, interesting. It's a reality I guess they wouldn't want to face either, huh? Probably fresh, green, clean running water. Never tasted a rad in their life. Must be nice. Speaking of that, let me get rid of my rads. Okay, I guess uh, on the next one we'll go meet all the department heads and we'll play nice. We'll pretend like we belong and that we're going along with the program. If you want to subscribe, click that button up top. And if you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play up to this point, you can click that image in the middle. It should send you to the playlist. All right, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.